Hello, everybody. Welcome to We'd Rather Be Reading. I'm Jerrica. And I'm Leah. And, and this little peeper in the background is Raven. <laughs> yeah, she's with us again today, making herself known. She felt like we weren't giving her enough uh, uh, screen time. time. Yeah, Airtime last, uh, last uh, episode. So this time she's making sure she gets heard. She has many thoughts on the book. Um, <laughs> Because she particularly book, like Damien. Yes. <laughs> the book, of course, is called Mark of the Raven. This time I remembered what book we were reading first yeah. before I ranted about it. But that's why Raven and likes it. And it's by it's... Morgan L. Busey. Busey I, I did there pay we attention go. to nice. it. Uh, we learned how to say your name. We apologize for the mangling <laughs> last week. Um uh, and Morgan L. Busey is a writer by day and a mother by night. There we go. You're a mother all day and night. Uh, me, uh, my kids can handle themselves. They're old enough. You gave uh, up the mother title when they turned 10 or something? No. No, no, I'll keep the title. I just don't, don't do the work anymore. Um, <laughs> Sounds like a nice uh, job. Yeah, yeah. A nice race. Get all the love. None of the work. No, it's still work, even when they're older. It's just different kinds of work. Um, she is the author of the Follower of the Word series and an award-winning uh, and the award-winning steampunk series, The Souls Chronicles. That's cool. I love yeah. steampunk. Her debut novel, Daughter of Light, was a Christie and Carol Award finalist. Uh, in her spare time, she enjoys playing game, taking long walks, and dreaming about her next novel. Cool. Cool. So. The book we read was Mark of the Raven, which is, um, it starts very similar to like a lot of the other kind of books. Like there's many families, like houses, they mm -hmm. have each have one ability and this ability was given to them sometime in the past. So most of the houses have like very specific abilities, like they can handle fire or water or, you know, wind or they can heal or they can, you know, these kinds of things, very specific things. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the main character is Celine, and she's of House Ravenwood. And the Ravenwoods are dreamers, so they can dream walk. Yeah, yeah. which I thought was a really cool concept. Yeah. I, I also liked, of course, that she turned into a literal raven. <laughs> when she dream walks, yes. yes. And Celine is um, the oldest daughter of the Ravenwood house. Her mother, Ragna, is the matriarch of the house. And they're very secretive because there was a war like some 400 years ago or something like that where the uh, neighboring empire was uh, encroaching on their land and the Ravenwood house was thought to fall and all the descendants were thought to be killed. Um, so the fact that they're still descendants of the original Ravenwood family and that they still have the power is a, a house secret. And I really like this concept of house secrets. Yeah, I thought honestly. so too. I thought it was really cool. And when her dad wanted her or the other leader to marry her and mm -hmm. said that then you get to know their secrets yeah. too. And I was like, oh, cool concept. Yeah, so basically you can, as the matriarch of a house or as the head of a house, you can um, bind certain knowledge to your house and then you can choose to share it with but it can never be shared beyond that um so if i tell if i were a matriarch and i would say like this is a house secret then the people within the house would still know it but they could never talk about it with anyone outside of the house or maybe not even each other sometimes hmm. um it depends on what the the owner of the secret kind of or the head of the house is saying uh, but when you marry all the secrets become known to each other yeah. So you know each other fully. When what is that going to like be like? Like a download? Like zoop, 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 zoop? Now yeah, but it is. It's yeah. like a, whoa, now I know you kind of Wave thing, of like, information. Cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so um, Celine is the eldest daughter. She has two younger sisters, Amara and Ophiliana. Uh, but it's only Amara that's kind of known. Ophiliana seems like she's not very well known. Like she doesn't speak and she's kind of held separate from everyone else kind of thing. Um, and... All of the Ravenwood women have the mark of the raven, but um, uh, Celine's mark is extra super, like, big, or it's special anyways. It's like a more distinct mark than any other uh, of these uh, Ravenwood uh, women. Uh, so it's believed that her her power when she comes into it will be like stronger than than the other women and it's true so when she does come into her power she she has a very easy time 
doing the dream walking and she's very good, good at, at this it. So yeah. it doesn't take training like her mother reflects on it a lot that it, she does things that her mother could not do kind of thing at that point mm. um and then there's a, an attack on one of the other kingdoms the where the house maris lives and they put up they can control water so he puts up a water wall and he calls all of the houses together for a council for the first time in like 400 years or something like that and they all decide to meet at ravenwood castle so all of these houses uh head of houses are coming there and in this we find out the celine's family are the way they make their money is basically by killing people in their dreams yes yeah. So like um, dream assassins. Yeah, and Celine she feels very conflicted by this. It's not something that she really wants to do. Um but this is what her mother trains her to do. So she has to also train herself to put on like this this mask of indifference and to shield her heart away so she won't be so affected by all of these horrible things of calling nightmares onto people and like increasing people's fears and stuff. Uh and um House Ravenwood is um they have like a deity that's kind of looks out for them, which is the dark lady. Yeah. And the dark lady gives prophecies and she's like their patron um, kind of thing. And she says <clears throat> to the mother, she gives a prophecy that there will be a threat from the north. And there's only two other houses in the north. So the mother, um, Ragnar, she decides to uh, take these two heads of house out, which happens to house Marius and the other one, the healer ones, right? Mm. I think. Uh, and because there's two of them, she can't do it herself, so she decides to give one of them to Celine. So Celine gets assigned to kill Damien of house Marius, and we get to follow Damien too as a first, not first person perspective, or a second person, yeah. third person yeah. perspective all the time, but we get chapters from his kind of following him rather than her. Exactly. Um, She's not there when we hear about him. Yeah, and we get his <laughs> thoughts and so on. Yeah. Um, and he's uh, he's the youngest head of a house. Like, his parents died of some kind of plague. Mm. And his brother's also dead of the same plague, I think. Um, and he's very young. He's, uh, his father's lifelong dream was to unite all the houses again. Um, and this is the way Damien's been raised. In his uh, part of the nation of the world where his house rules uh you marry out of love and it, it seems very kind yeah. of like good uh, yeah. and and they are not their patron is not the dark lady but the light mm -hmm. and it's just the light yeah no person not a person actually, kind of just light uh and they pray to the light yeah um so he he goes to this uh, council with all the other houses to to try to get everyone to sign a treaty to uh, support each other in case they're attacked yeah uh and during the talks it's not going so well the other houses some of them are for but most of them are against and okay and uh ravenwood is against it yeah uh ravenwood of course is against because it turns out that ravenwood has actually been working with the empire for like this entire time plotting mm. against everyone else because they're still holding a grudge for the fact that the other houses <coughs> let their house fall Back in the day. Um, and then when it comes down, like, Celine goes walking in um, Damien's uh, dreams a few times. And she, when she comes in there for the first time, it's, it's very, like, it's a very strong connection immediately. Because she has to touch someone when she goes into their dreams. And usually it's like she touches and then she chooses to join the dream. Yeah. But every time she touches Damien, it's kind of like he tugs her into the dream. And when she's in there... His dreamscape is very different from all the other people's dreamscapes where she's walked like it's a sandy beach. It's full of light and sunshine. And oh, then yeah. she sees this ball of light. And mm. she's been told by her mother, you can never touch a soul. Because if you touch the soul when you're in the dream, you will make yourself known to the dreamer. And they will know you're not just in the dream, but also outside of the dream. Mm -hmm. um, so she can never touch the soul. But she's like inexplicably drawn to this soul. Mm. I smell soulmate. Yeah, yeah. What can I say? And she's mm -hmm. like has to physically like stop herself from touching it because it's all she wants to do when she sees it is to touch it. Mm. And it's this love of the light and wanting to be engulfed and like wanting to be close to this light that that in the end makes her choose to not kill Damien and to help him and his people, <clears throat> the five people they travel with, escape through these tunnels uh, to make it back to their own land. And as they're escaping through these tunnels, um, 
Ragna, um, her mother, Celine's mother, decides like she's trying to chase them down with the uh, soldiers. And when it comes to the Crosses River, and the only way for Damien to be able to get us get away is to raise the water wall but if he does that then Celine will die unless he marries her and she becomes one of his people and then um, she will be protected and this is like a plot that Celine's dad had because he married into House Ravenwood to find out their secrets not out of love and he believes that Celine is like the key to join the houses together because yeah. he sees like a kindness in her that's not the this aspiration that um, the mother has and that also the middle sister Amara has mm. um I mean, I, th- I thought it was good. This is book two, one out of three. So yeah. I was like, when I finished, I was like, I'm just going to start book two. <laughs> you know, like, I want to know what's two, happening. Yeah. You know, like, There's a third one. Is the third one out also? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're all available on Storytel, which is nice. I know. That is nice. Yeah. So um, I was very excited to... I, I like this book. I thought it was a solid book. Yeah. There's a few things that, that bug me. Um, one other thing was like in the beginning when we first meet uh, Celine's mother... Celine describes her immediately. And I, and I just, it's not particularly this book. It was just when that happened, I was like, Ugh, I hate it when they do this. And it's like, if your mom were to walk into this room now, which is possible, would you go like, oh, there's my mother with her dark hair and her blue eyes and her, <laughs> you know, probably not. You'd be like, yeah. hey, mom, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like you wouldn't describe Not it. even pay attention to what she's wearing. <laughs> kind of. Um, and then, so, and in this book, like when she sees the mom, she goes, she saw her mother like, like uh, noticing her thick hair and her her Ravenwood with the same th- dark thick dark hair that Ravenwood women have and the full lips and blah 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 and I'm like yeah I wouldn't go like oh yeah that's my mum look at her full lips like all the women of my family like hmm. no so I I kind of like it when it's a little bit smoother into it kind of like um, if she would have seen her mother after she went through a transformation, she would have gone like, like I see my mom with new eyes or like now as a woman, I see my mom yeah. as a knee. And then you can describe or if it's like, um, if there's someone new coming in and you're like trying to see this person with that person's eyes, then it's more kind of smooth into the description. Like it's good for us to know what they look like, mm-hmm. but description just for the sake of description when it's like someone who sees them every single day, it's it feels clunky to me. And it yeah, see what you mean. Particularly, this book is just when it in happened general. in this book. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. It's this is a, another thing I hate in books. <laughs> a placement, like a way yeah. to describe somebody. Okay, yeah. I see what you mean. Um, and then, uh, then he had some some of the like tropey things in a way. Like uh, Celine is trying to pre- protect Amara, and it's very obvious that Amara does not want to be protected. Like right. no interest whatsoever in being protected. Mm. And then we have like the the hero complex of I will protect all my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will take this downfall and they the shall martyr, never no. have to. Mm. And it's a martyr thing. And, yeah. and I mean, it happens a lot in these kinds of books. Mm. Um, and then I was a bit confused about the names. Like Ophelia <laughs> was not my favorite, but particularly Hagatha. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> which, which seems like a very mean name for an old woman to have. Like, I or actually... for a baby. Would you name your baby Hagatha? Haggy. I mean, it could be cute. But Hag. I would Hag. not. Hag. I would probably not name my kid in that. But, but I can name my kid Raven, so we have something in common with this book here. Yeah, but Raven's cute. Hag- Hagatha? Hag. Hag. With, a, with an Hag. H. I think it's Agatha, yes, but yeah. Hagatha. Well, if you're French, you just don't pronounce the H. Anyways. Fair enough. We'll just go Agatha. <laughs> and then uh, my last comment that I had was that um, she did a decent job, the narrator, but I would have really liked to see two narrators. Actually, when it was like switching between uh, Damien's perspective and Celine's. Uh, I, I love that when you said that. I was like, yeah, you're right. It would have been really nice to have have Damien's voice. Yeah. But I, I like the narrator. And we just finished <clears throat> Longest Book Ever. Yeah. <laughs> Court by <laughs> Tracy Wolf. And that narrator for Grace was not my favorite. No. Like, okay, she's a good narrator in, in general, but it was whiny, nasally. It just it mm-hmm. wasn't a pitch that was very pleasant for my ears. And it, I think Grace as a whole is an annoying character. Yeah, so I think it's more what it was she more, says. It's true. It's true. It was <laughs> more Grace than the neighbor. But anyway, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like she's the messenger kind of thing. I know. <laughs> she's like, well, I had to read Grace. But God, <laughs> can you imagine being that narrator and having to read Grace? No. <laughs> like, I all of these books. I 
kilometer. It was like it took 24 hours to listen to it. Imagine yeah. how long you must have taken to record. Record it. Like, no, oh. no, I feel for oh. her. So I can't, I can't like trash her too much. But yeah. it was really nice to hear this narrator's voice yeah. after that one. It was like soothe, calm ocean compared to it. Yeah, no, it's like nice. wow, this girl has a nice voice. I really liked her, her um, like accents too for yeah. every different character no she was good um it was just a shame that damien didn't get his own narrator I no think, i agree uh, i think that would have made like just would have upped it just, just a little bit just when you listen to it there's a few times where it the narration got a little monotone and it yeah. took me out of the story mm-hmm. and i told you this like in messenger that i had a really hard time staying connected to the book listening to it of course i have a brand new baby and like the kids are on march break and it's fucking chaos at home but (laughs) there's a few times where i'd be like oh my god i missed like three chapters i listened i mean it was speaking in my ear but i was not paying attention so i had to go back and re-listen and then i realized i don't feel like i know the character at all i'm like why am i being so disconnected from her and then I realized, oh, yeah, it's a third person. That's third why. Person. It's not my favorite style of writing or reading. I I don't get into it as much. Though I have to say, like, when she changed to speak about Damien and stuff like that, then it got a little bit more personal. And not all third person narration books do that, like no. switch perspectives. And then by the end of the book, I was into the story. But it took me some time to be like, why am I not being captured? Oh, yeah, it's third person. And that's just a personal preference. It has nothing to do with the book whatsoever because I think that it worked with the way that she wrote it. I think it was a pretty good book, honestly. Yeah. Um, but I, I also struggled a little bit with getting into it. But I think it's not necessarily the book. I think it's more that we read so many of these books yeah. that for me it feels a little bit like homework to figure out what this world is all about. When like, we start when a new you world. start and it's like, <clears throat> all right, so this one has houses. Do I what do I need to remember? Do I need to remember names? <clears throat> do I need to remember what they do? How much will this be repeated? Is this like Grace where she would just tell me all the information I need to know, like continuously Every five all the minutes, time? Yeah. <laughs> or is this like uh, one of some of the other books where you're like, Who? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something you mentioned this when? <laughs> You know, because this happens sometimes where it's like they expect you to remember shit. Like, people don't know me as a reader if they expect (laughs) me to Like, I I will spot continuity shit. But, like, remembering what I read, like, I remember the feelings. My mom said the exact same thing today. She said (laughs) that she wouldn't be a good podcaster for books because she reads them so fast. Yeah. And that she remembers the feeling and general, like, storyline and meaning that comes out Mm -hmm. of it and stuff. But... She reads them too fast to remember what names, oh, what they I, look I like. I flushed the name so fast, unless it's Grace, you know. But, <laughs> but this is why I take notes, because yeah, otherwise exactly. I'd be useless yeah, in, these, so in these talks. I'd be like, and then there was this girl, <laughs> <laughs> and she had something with ravens, and there was this boy, <laughs> and then there was some ball, and there was some dancing involved, and that was pretty romantic. And then they were running through tunnels, and she <laughs> played with swords. <laughs> See this. This would be my summary. <laughs> and there's a oh, ball yeah. of light. And oh yeah, there was a creepy chapel with a creepy yeah. priest, and then there was the happy priest. And then they got uh, married, yeah. but they don't they love each other. There's no love yet, but the love will come in mm. book two. I can see it coming in book two. But. It was really good to read this book, though, because I'm reading another book on the side, yeah. which is called My Dark Vanessa. And this book is like the most, one of the most difficult books I've read in a while. Oh. Yeah, you would hate it. It's yeah. um, it's about this it the 15-year-old girl <coughs> who is groomed and, and basically abused by a teacher. He's 42. And yes. it's like... It's all from her perspective, and she's so messed up, and it jumps back and forth in time from okay. when the abuse is happening and how she thinks she loves him, and how she's like she tries to read him of what he wants her to say, and she sees everything as a test, and oh, he's testing me, and if I say the wrong thing, maybe he won't want to see me anymore, and like, and he full on rapes her, and she's like crying, and it's her oh, first time, and it's like it's awful, it's so awful, and then I could just like put it down and put this in my ears, and I'm like, ha. Ah. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That seems heavy. Oh, it's so heavy. Um, I mean, well written and all of that stuff. Yeah. But just, 
just so. <clears throat> I'm reading on the side Amelia Hutchins' new book that I've waited forever and ever, mm-hmm. and still we don't know what creature she is, but I think that she's both <coughs> a phoenix and a dragon. A phoenix dragon? I think. I think so. I don't know. We don't know for sure. The but most special of all the specials. It's a long book, and there's also characters that have similar names to the characters in this book, like Amara, and Amara mm-hmm. was like the evil sister, and this one is also a little bit evil sistery. So I was like, huh. Amara Note to self, Amara is an evil name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they mean, there's some names that are like the like Sirius and Silas and Damien and Lucian yeah. and Lucius. Lucian. And, That's and like all of them is like you just know evil that this guy. is gonna be a bad yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you go and name your kid that and <laughs> conquer they're gonna yeah. try to conquer the world or you know they're gonna have to be real nice to kind of counter all the <laughs> evil feelings people get when they hear their names like, what's your name damien oh, oh. <laughs> no damien's not too bad but maybe like silas it's like mm. <laughs> what is it there's a mal name to um whatever it doesn't matter there is a uh, when my sister was a teenager my older sister she was dating this guy and his name was not seer Serious. See. Oh my gosh. Silas? It, it's so so close to that. And we just read a book and I was like, okay, but this is a bad guy's name. Yeah. Do you remember? Anyways. So it was something like Silas Serious, something yeah. like that. And he was also goth and like drew her black and white paintings of like dark birds haunting her window kind of thing. Anyways, one day my dad comes downstairs. And with a baseball bat, <laughs> and he chases the kid, poor kid, around <laughs> our like air sofa and stuff like that. And my dad was reminding me of this the other day, and I was like, "Yeah, but he had a bad guy's name, so you, so you m- must have just known." Like, no, I'm gonna have to chase this guy out with a baseball bat. Anyways, then he like very dramatically broke up with my sister outside of a window on a rainy day. Oh my god. And he was like, we can't be together anymore. And she's like, okay. <laughs> you say so. Do you need an umbrella for your way home? <laughs> no. No, you know. I read this book. Um, our friend Laura, she, she made us read this book for a book club. I don't know if you read I it. I did not. Of but- and there it says that men don't like to have dry heads. That's why I like... <laughs> Like when they made the cars, like cars, electrical cars with roofs were only for women because men did not need roofs on their cars. <laughs> they also did not need to start their car from the comfort of inside the car. They also wanted to go outside and actually crank it to start it. And, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. That sounds like very showman you know? Like, it's so good, that I book, though. Like, be seen. You should read that book. Like, it was really, really good. Yeah. It, it talks about how... Um, we didn't get wheels on suitcases until like the 80s mm. because it was only then women started traveling by themselves and wheels for suitcases were only for women because men were strong enough strong to enough carry to their own freaking yeah, yeah. Free- and their family suitcases. <coughs> Even ridiculous. though someone had the idea of trying to sell it and they were like, no one wanted to buy yeah. it off them. They were like, no. Everything is a penis competition for men. <laughs> like ridiculous. You're like... So Look hang on a second. How many suitcases I can you carry? You want to be sweaty and miserable? So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is ridiculous. <laughs> and like so many things would just happen so much faster if we just <laughs> st- stopped putting like a gender on stuff. Like oh, electrical so cars, like the fact that we did, don't have like there were more electrical cars than uh, like cars on gasoline when they first came out with a car. What? Yeah. And That's then, crazy. And then, like, the electrical car was seen as a car for women because it was silent, didn't stink, <laughs> had a roof, <laughs> you know, and could be started from inside <laughs> the car with comfortable seats. How All ridiculous. The men don't want so in their ridiculous. cars. <laughs> Let's make the cars extra big. But did you know that all the electrical heavy. cars came with a little flower holder? <laughs> for the no. Yes. No. And then That's it's very only funny. the electrical car only took off now when Elon Musk like launched a Tesla, you know, and he did not put a single flower holder in his cars. Rude. I know he should have stayed true to the originals. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's really interesting that book. Like it talks about gender contamination in, in like um, in products and stuff. It's super interesting, and it makes you like pissed off that people are so stupid. Oh. Yeah. Did yeah. you also know that the first person to drive a car any kind of real distance was a woman? Berta Benz. 
Okay. And her man, she stole the car from him first off. Yeah. Because he was only going to drive it around in the city because cars were not supposed to go outside of the city center. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. They couldn't get dirty with dirt roads Whatever. and such. Whatever. I mean, it was a pain for her to drive that distance that she did drive because mm. uh, it broke down quite a few times, her car, and he had to be pushed up the hill and then he went a little bit too fast down the hill. And it was all sorts of dangerous on, along the way. <laughs> Uh, and then when she got to where she needed to go, the person she was going to see wasn't even home. So, <laughs> But she did it. Okay. So the first person to drive a car any kind of real distance was a woman. Girl Super power. smart. Girl power. Girl power. Girl power. Anyways, this was not the book we were supposed to talk about. We were supposed to talk about But Mark there was the girl Raven. power. And you know, one there thing before power. we go today, we have to... Oh, there was a bird noise from our little baby. Why? Uh, <laughs> Pterodactyl. She is a dragon phoenix. She's a dragon. <laughs> a raven dragon a phoenix. Raven dra- Plot twist. She has raven ink Here's hair. Here's the reveal. Raven hair. <laughs> no, I wanted to say we didn't judge the book by its cover, this we one. We didn't. But I to want to because too. I love it, love it. Like, there's so many books that I read, and you know how much I love all of the bad covers. Mm-hmm. Like, if there's muscles, male muscles on the cover, I'll just read it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we know. We know. We know. If there is more than one man on the cover and a woman, I will read this book. But this one actually has um, a female on the front cover alone. And a lot of these fantasy books, I don't love all of the artwork. You know, like the character is like shady and weird face or long, like, chin or something odd looking. Mm-hmm. And then it makes me see that the whole book when maybe it's described differently or I see it differently in my head. But nevertheless, back to this cover, I see her as this throughout the book. And she looks super badass on this cover. With her two swords. With her two swords and her, like, raven hair, I want to say, right? This is another cover for this book. That's also badass. Yeah. But she is badass. I think yeah. that's the thing with Celine. Like, but she's badass in the good kind of way because she's yeah. she doesn't just want to kill and maim. Like, she can do it if she has to, but she doesn't want to. Uh, no, I think we're going to see good things from, from um, Celine and Damien. Yeah, I will read the next yeah. book too. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna unite. I mean, like I said to you, like I can pre- predict this. Like there's a soulmate. Yeah. They're gonna change the world. Yeah, she's gonna be important. All of this and that. But even though I can predict all of it, it doesn't matter because I still want to read it. I yeah, want to see how it comes together. <laughs> I still want to read I still it. Read it. <laughs> so I was very excited, and I would actually recommend this book. Yeah, I think me it's. Uh, I think it's a nice. It wasn't a long read, which was also kind of nice. It was uh, like ten and a half hours yeah. audio kind of thing, and and we've had these books that are like these bricks of books where you're like yeah. oh my god yeah. it feels like homework and a chore. It's like, yeah. anything that's over like 12 hours it's it's a it's a bit too long especially mm. if you're going to do a trilogy like you have two more books mm. leave true, some true, stuff true, for the true, other true, true. <laughs> yeah. um so perfect length nice to listen to good narrator uh good characters in it i'm excited yeah yeah Let's get and to it. And we still haven't decided what we're reading next. So Ooh. I guess you're going to have to stay tuned because we have a list, but we haven't decided what we're reading off of it yet. So we'll we'll get back to you. We'll post something on social media when we decide. Yes. Yes. But until then, thanks for listening. Happy reading. Happy reading. Bye. Bye. We'd Rather Be Reading is an original podcast by Jerrica Siron and Leah Sanfer. The music for The Penguins, written and performed by David Allred from the album The Transition, courtesy of Erased Tapes. Please check him out on Spotify and check us out on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram at We'd Rather Be Reading and on Twitter at We'd Rather Read. You can also email us at We'd Rather Be Reading the Pod at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.